The following audio brought to you by TSF Entertainment Podcast may contain graphic descriptions of violence and or audio clips of violence or sexual explicit events. Listener's discretion is advised. Let's get it. All right. What's good, TSF Entertainment Podcast fans? It's your boy, the Juggernaut of Souls, and I am back with the fam, Retro CG, Really BTV, and the bro, Jack of Jordans. What's good, y'all? I hey, said, everybody. yo. What's up? And <laughs> hey, y'all already know what we talk. Um, we right back at it in the building, and we bringing that power thing back to y'all, man. Um, Book three. Raising Canaan. So this is basically our podcast of our thoughts and what we would like to see in the the season, pretty much. So we're going to break it down, y'all. Tune in. All right. So I guess I need to go ahead and set the tone for what book three is going to be about. So um, it's set in South Jamaica, Queens, um, and the year is 1991. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um because it's going to be like a callback to uh, my childhood. So I'm really excited about that part of it. Um, mm-hmm. This is the thir- third installment of the Power Series. Um, and this one is centered around Kanan. So uh, Kanan Stark, which was a character in the previous uh, Power Series that subsequently ended up getting killed. So this is his story. And um, it's set up, um, I think he's going to be 15. So I think this is a great age, and I think it's very reminiscent to uh, Tariq's age when he started coming into the game. So we're going to see a 15-year-old version of uh, Kanan, who is uh, – his mother is Raquel, who's supposed to be a cocaine distributor. So she's going to um, pretty much bring her son into the life. So that's what I, I see the the show is a synopsis about the show. Um. And hopefully, we'll have a better show since the uh, showrunner and creator and writer, lead writer, is uh, Sasha Penn and not Courtney Kemp. But she is executive producing on this show. So hopefully, we'll have a better show, a better written show, uh, since Courtney Kemp ain't in that writer's room. So let's let's talk about it. What's your thoughts? Um, I think, personally, that uh, it's almost uh, uh, like how can I say it? Uh, uh, a beginning to what we saw with um, Tariq and Tasha. You know what I'm saying? If right, it started, right. If it started out as, you know, basically Kanan's mom being a drug, uh, you know, a drug distributor, you know, we actually seen this, you know, in the first in the first season where, Tasha pretty much was trying to groom Tariq into the game. No matter how much Ghost wanted to keep him out the game, he was being groomed into the game by his mother. So I think that, you know, this is pretty much a, uh, you know, spot on to what we, you know, what we've seen in the past. All right, really, B, what you got? Um, I agree. Like, I'm excited about this. I really feel like it's going to give us um, a different flavor, different insight. Kanan was like, um, he was an important character, but he was an auxiliary character all at the same time. And I think it was a lot right, right. that we didn't learn about his past and how he got to who he, you know, to be who he was. So I, I'm looking forward to it. And I agree. I'm definitely excited about that timeline, about that, you know, that era, because it is definitely a retro for me. It's, a, you know, definitely going to put me in a, a certain mindset. So I'm here for that. I'm definitely excited about it. Jack, Jack of Joys, what you got? I'm definitely excited about it, man. I think it's uh uh by being in Southside Jamaican Queens, coincidentally, uh that's actually where 50 Cent was was born and raised at, but it's neither here nor there. Um I I'm excited. I'm excited about the era, you know, being in the nineties. I I'm excited to see what brought Kanan to be the ruthless the ruthless dude that he ended up being. You know, I wanna see 
uh, uh, kind of the prequel to, you know, power with, with Breeze, if they could introduce him into it and actually get an outlook on on other characters that was mentioned in other power in other power episodes. So we could possibly get to the bottom of Kane in character to what we know him to be up to his death. So I, I'm excited to see it. That's, so, that, that's dope. So I'll share everybody else's opinion. Like I'm super excited about this. I haven't really been excited about Power for a while now. We all know that. <laughs> we all know right. how I feel. Yes, we about do. Book two. We definitely know how I feel about book two. But um, I share everyone else's opinion as well. I am super excited uh, with it being based in the nineties and um, getting that backstory to Kanan and learning because Kanan was. I mean, he was he was your typical TV show villain, but he was a little bit more ruthless. I mean, he was very cold, uh, very calculating. Um, very manipulative, so it, it will be it will be nice to see how he became that person. Um, so for those of you who may not know this already, the show is set to air on Stars Sunday, eight p.m. Um, July the eighteenth. So, so a week from is, today, a week from today, correct. So we're just kind of putting our first thoughts out there of what we like to see in the show and what we think is going to happen in the show, and so. Um, I definitely think we're going to get a lot of backstory on Jukebox as well. Yeah, I, yeah, we're going to. I was going to say that we're going to see a lot of that relationship with him and Jukebox. Yeah, I hope because... so. I will also like to see, you know, like even going back again to like the, uh, you know, the first series of Power. You know, Kanan was in jail at the time when he, um, you know, set up everything to have Roller killed. He was in jail when I would like to see all that. All that need to be incorporated, man. Well, it wasn't just with Roller, because let's keep in mind, uh, we later learned, yeah, you're right, when um, Power Book One or Season One of Power first started, we met Kanan in jail. Mm-hmm. And right. uh, throughout that entire season, and even into the second season, there were hits that were uh, being done on Ghost and Tommy's organization. And, you know, it was pretty much taking out all their permettas. Right. And so, uh, you know, ultimately we learned why he did that because we learned that Ghost and Tasha set him up on some drug charges for him to do time so they can take over the organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a lot of reference to a character that we didn't learn much about in Power series, the first series of Power, which was Breeze. Breeze was, um, I guess, running the organization per se. And, um, the way I took it, the way I interpreted it was that Kanan, Ghost, possibly Jukebox, and Tommy were all working for Breeze. And I think that, you know, Ghost, that. we learned we learned that Ghost had a bigger picture in mind for he didn't want to be a corner boy, you know, so he wanted to kind of take over the rings of things and we subsequently saw that happen. Um, but I don't... As disappointing as it is going to be, at the same time, I'm I'm not going to be so disappointed. I don't think that we're going to see much of Ghost and Tommy or hear much about Ghost and Tommy this first season. That's maybe oh in God. later seasons. Maybe in later seasons we'll get some of that backstory between Ghost, Tommy, and Kanan. But I really think that the first season is going to be set up building that character development for Kanan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Right. I think we're going to end up rooting for Kanan because ultimately in power, we kind of ended up rooting for Kanan somewhat, even though he did some ruthless things and some cold hearted calculating things. We understood his motivation as to why, even though he was going against Ghost and Tommy per se, more so Ghost than Tommy. But ultimately, he ended up helping Ghost and Tommy. Um, I don't think we too much care for the development or the influence that he had on Tariq. But we kind of understood why things happened the way they happened. And ultimately, it was a lot of Ghost's fault. Right. And so, like, get out of my head, because that's exactly what I was going to say, is that I hope they don't... <laughs> I hope they don't rush through giving us the Keenan story just to get to familiar faces and get us to... Play. Right. I feel, like, I feel like that's definitely a season two. I don't, I don't even feel like we need to even hear anything about them in this season, because I feel like there's I enough... Agree 
background. Yeah, I agree. I just, agree. So yeah. you know what I'm saying. So like, that's or even maybe a see. season three. You know, I I would live with well, not yeah. meeting Ghost and Tommy and Angela until later seasons. You know, yeah. The, the first those couple are my seasons, two... I need to know about Canyon, right? Yeah, right. Those are my first two. Season, my two definitely. concerns. Those are those are my. That's my first concern. Then my other concern. So like, I'm excited about the show, but I do have some concerns. That's the first one is that they try to rush it, and the second concern I have is um that like you said um um Damon I was trying not to say Damon but like you said <laughs> <laughs> like it's gonna a lot of people are talking about how reminiscent it is of get rich or die trying so yep. I'm really hoping that this isn't a uh, a TV series version of get rich or die trying so I know I that there's not. some things that aren't exactly the same like I get it but at the same time, there's so many similarities. I just hope, and I know that Kanan's character, a lot of it is based on, you know, 50 Cent's experiences, but I just hope that they don't lean on that and they, they get lazy with it and they just take so much from that. You know what I'm saying? So those are my, right, right, those, right. those are my concerns, though. I ain't gonna lie. Those are some concerns I have, but. That's okay, my biggest. Jack, what's your first thought? That, that's my biggest concern is that they go into the whole you know, 50 cent story and it's going to be kind of like one of them things like, all right, I kind of saw the story already before, you know, I'm hoping they lean in more towards uh, the relationship between Kanan and Kanan's mom. Is that, that's his mom, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So they lean in more show towards, you know, Kanan and, and Kanan's mom, you know, and the type of person that, you know, that she is. And me and Retro had a conversation about this briefly yesterday. What I would say was, you know, the difference between, it seemed like from her character and Monet character is Monet was building was was further building her family empire off of her husband's work. And it seemed like what Kane and mom is that she's coming from the bottom of everything and building it off of her own back and her own sweat and her own hustle. And she just so happened to be teaching Kane and the game. I'm not sure if he comes in like he's not ready for the game, like he's, he's kind of timid. You know, and he kind of got to bust his cherry, so to speak. You know, but I don't. I, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to hearing how his mom raised him, how makes it further brings him along. And I'm definitely, as me and Rachel talked about yesterday, I'm definitely interested. I heard Breeze name throughout Power. I definitely need to see who Breeze is and what type of person that he is. Facts. I agree. We always heard about Breeze and. Even up until the point where, you know, um, right before ultimately Ghost being shot, you know, Tariq was hell bent on why he shot Breeze or why right. Breeze was killed or whatever. I definitely need to know, you know, like Jack of Jordan said, I definitely need to know who Breeze was, his character, you know, his background, you know, what, what person was he? You know what I'm saying? What pushed Ghost to that point other than you know, basically want to run his own, you know, like you said, not be a corner boy no more, but be that, you know what I'm saying, be that, you know, he got to go, just instantly, period, point blank. Like, okay, I'm putting Kanan in jail, but he got, but Bree's got to go. I also agree with you guys, you know what I'm saying, I definitely want to see this first season be strictly about Kanan. I do not want to see uh, Get Rich or Die Trying series, you know what I'm saying, right. let's keep it Let's keep it straight solely on power. Do I think we are going to see some similarities? Possibly, but I want it to be at least 95%, you know, raising Canaan. I don't want to see Get Rich or Die Trash. Right. And I don't think that we will. So let me go ahead and put my writer's hat on, you know, because I'm an oh, honorary writer in the here writer's Here we room. go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Here we go. So I think it's going to be quite the opposite of that. I think that this is going to be a different look and feel for the Power series than what we saw. Because one of my biggest concerns was I didn't want it to be something that we've already saw, which was uh, in Power Series 1. Uh, we went through six seasons of Power already. Right. That story has already been told. I don't need to be retold in a different version. And I guess that's <laughs> one of my biggest issues with Book 2. Because book two should have been season seven of Power. Because it just seems like it's a continuation with the same characters, 
uh, with some new characters, but we're telling the same story again. I mean, it's just all the callbacks to Power Series 1 with Ghost and Angela and Tasha. We see that happening with Tariq and the two love interests. I can't even remember what the little girl name is. I know one of them is Diana and then the other little girl that he's going to school Abby. with. Uh, I don't know what that chick name was. No, but Effie came in. She was a little She was a little drunk. I forgot about her. I forgot about her too. But yeah, so yeah. now he has, he has uh, like three different love interests because you know he got the little girl he's going to school with um, that keep ducking and dodging her boyfriend. Then you got Diana, Monet's daughter. And then mm-hmm. you got uh, Effie. So, I mean, you just got, you, you, you're you turning Tariq into a younger version of Ghost, a different version of Ghost. And I don't want to see that in Raising Canaan. I don't want to see any of that. I want a different story to be told. Yes, we are recycling characters still, yes. But we are also recycling characters that wasn't part of the main story arc as much as Ghost, Tasha, and Tommy and Angela and all that. Kanan was Facts. kind of like an auxiliary character, as really B said earlier. He he did he didn't spend much time in the series until later in the series. You know, we saw where uh, his son was going to see him in jail and all that, but we really didn't get to learn much about Kanan until after he had gotten out, and we really understood his plot and his schemes and things like that. So I really want to go back and 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 learn that story of how they all met, how they all linked up, and you know bring characters like Jukebox to the forefront because it was cold hearted and ruthless too, mm-hmm. and Kanan ultimately ended up killing her, and that was his cousin. So we need to understand how that relationship developed in this family, you know, right, because it right. seems like the whole family is in the life. Um, very similar to Monet and uh, her force and her family in the life. I don't think we're going to see that with Kanan and Jukebox. I think that they're going to have interest in wanting to be in the life. So I don't think it's going to be something forced like Monet is trying to force her kids into being in the life uh, the way she wants them to be. I don't think it's going to be a situation where he's curious like Tariq was to be a part of life. And then, it, then again, Kanan, we may see a different version of Tariq through Kanan. Maybe that's why Kane took such a liking to Tariq because he's going to see a lot of himself in Tariq. That so I would think be dope. That, that would be dope. So I think for as far as Kane's mom, I think she is going to be that drug lord, that ruthless, and um, she's going to be very similar to Monet as far as using Kane to be the muscle for the organization and just teaching him the game and how she finesses the game and all that. So that's going to be really interesting to see. But what I don't want to see is I don't want any reference to Tasha. I don't want any reference to Ghost, Tommy. Yes, I want to see those things in book three, but I want to wait for it. I want right. I want to lead up to that to later seasons. But for now, let's get this development on Kanan and Jukebox and his mom. and Because right. we're going to get introduced to a lot of other characters, and I don't feel like uh, the show will do its justice by you know just not developing other characters just to rush us to like really be said to the characters that we know from other series like we we spent six series with those characters you know six seasons with those characters we 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 know those characters very well where we know who they Mm -hmm. are right right these new characters let's let's find out about them and I'm gonna be honest with you, the old characters don't bother me as much as the old storyline. Like the biggest thing that we kept saying all through book two was this is the same storyline. Yep. Like story. I, I mean, I, I I agree. Like I do agree that I don't want to see a whole bunch. Of, I don't want to hear about ghosts. I don't want to hear nothing about no Saint Patrick. Nothing. You know, at least the whole first season. Like you said, maybe even into season two. But I definitely do not want to see the exact same. Like it was too. Similarities is one thing, but when it is the exact same storyline, you just changed up the names. It was just that was one of the most frustrating things with book two. So that's what I I definitely like. Yeah, you want to see? We know his mom is the queen pen. We know there's gonna be some similarities to Monet and Tasha and and Tariq and all of that. But I don't want us to feel like well, we just watching the same damn thing set in 1990. What was it? 91. Yeah, you know? right. so, set in 1991. Right. Right. I definitely want to see some. I definitely want to see some different. I definitely want to see, um, you know, Kanan actually grow into, like you said, what what we saw in the first seat in the first, uh, you know, the first series of Power. 
Like, what made him that ruthless? What pushed him to that mm-hmm. point? I want to see all of that. You know what I'm saying? I want to, you know, and like you said, don't rush it. Don't rush season one just to, I mean, you know, just to add in Ghost Tommy and Angie. Don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. build build up Kanan's character. Build up Jukebox character. You know what I'm saying? Then and start think- adding in, you know, adding on the why, the why this happened or why he felt like this about this person or, you well, know, what made this person cool or whatever. Then start doing that. What gives me hope for that, though, is that we have a new showrunner. We have a new head writer. We have a new uh, series uh, showrunner. So with that, I think a lot of that is going to be built on her interpretation. We know how Courtney Kemp was about the characters. And she wrote these characters from the perspective of the story that she was trying to tell. So I think Mm -hmm. by us having a new showrunner now, we're going to get a character that we're familiar with, but told in a totally different perspective than what Courtney Kemp's interpretation of Kanan was. So I think right. that gives us a lot of hope that it's not going to be so many callbacks because, again, I do want to see young Tasha. I do want to see young Lakeisha. Oh, women, do... get that on tape, y'all. He wants to see young Tasha. Somebody hold that. Keep that voice note. Oh, yeah. I'm glad this is recorded. Well, yeah. You didn't let me finish before you got excited. <laughs> but since we went down that rabbit hole, let's go. Yes, we know that young Tasha is going to be a thought. And we know that she's going to be thotting in the 90s. Yeah, just like please. she was in the 2000s. So, I mean, you opened this door. I wasn't even going to go there with I didn't open the door. <laughs> open the door. But, yeah, I'm sure in season four of this and i don't know because that was another thing i was trying to sit here and think about i i've heard through the grapevine that we are going to get 10 episodes so that's good so yeah, i don't feel like 10. season one is going to be rushed because i think what well, how many episodes did we get with book two was it i think it was less than 10 too many it, it felt like it was too many but at the same as time i don't think it, that it was I don't know, I'd have to look it up but it was because some of the episodes they they try to do too much in one episode you know they, they tried did. to cover too much in Trust one episode me, I know. <laughs> because it was short <laughs> a short season but i think that with 10 episodes we'll get an opportunity for season 1 to be spread out and we we can get a lot of lead up to by episode 5 i think that we will get a good idea about character Kanan's character, whether we're going to root for him or whether we're going to uh, just understand why he was such a hated character uh, or why Ghost and Tasha felt the need to do what they needed to do to set him up. But I, I often wonder with these continuations, how many seasons are they they're going to go? Because, you know, Power went for six seasons. I don't see Book 2 surviving six seasons. I don't see it going that far. You know, I can see, uh, I can see, I can see this one going a few seasons because you got a lot of, uh, at least four. It, it, it's it, it's introducing, uh, different characters. You know, uh, just doing a little a research. Yeah, just doing a little research. You know, it talks about uh Lulu who's supposed to be portrayed as uh who's supposed to be uh Kanan and Jukebox uncle. You know, so they're introducing a new character. Uh, then you got Omar Ebb's character, who's uh, I believe he's I, I, I'm I'm I could I be mistaken. A detective or something. Yeah, I yeah. think he's playing. I think he's playing a detective role. You know, so you see like a lot of different characters. You know, coming into that have into to be play. developed. Yeah, yeah, coming into coming into play. You know, with you know, and uh, and his his mom uh, coming into play, and there's like a different other detectives that's you know that further that can further this a few different seasons because there's so many different characters and if they take their time and do it right with character development they can keep by doing the character development it can go on for a little bit i agree and take us to the characters that we are familiar with because i'm on imdb right now and i don't see i was gonna say it was 10 episodes though yeah yeah yeah. and i don't see any reference to uh ghost tasha Angela, Tommy, Keisha. So that's great. I, I so didn't either. So that's yeah. that is absolutely great to see because now, but what I did see that's curious enough is we see younger versions of the characters that we already we see younger versions of. So there's a young version of Jukebox. There's a young version of Kanan. So that's a younger version of Kanan. Yep. Right. So that means so they must uh, be doing flashbacks. Right. Yeah. So that means we do have time for a whole season to be spent just on the development of those characters, Kanan and Jukebox and 
all the rest of the new characters. Season two, you know, could be, you know, his mom, what happens to his mom? Because ultimately, uh, well, I don't want to predict what's going to happen, but ultimately we know that his mom's not going to make it out. We know a lot of these characters that we're seeing in Raising Canaan is not going to make it out because we didn't see them in the other version of power. We know that Jukebox and Kanan makes it. So because we see them in another series. So right. ultimately we're going to have to see the 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 rise and fall of his mom as well. So I think that's enough to carry two seasons by itself, if not three. And uh, then the I fourth season not, uh... towards the end of the season, then we start getting these callbacks to Ghost and Tommy and Tasha and all that. Then that's a whole different season itself right there developing their younger characters if you're on the website still oh go ahead i'm sorry really b no go ahead finish up because he said that he was on the website you know whatever and i was on the website earlier today and i was looking at um a couple of characters or whatever i do find it interesting that you know they introduced the character lulu was supposed to be the uncle of jukebox and canaan that he's in all 10 he's in all 10 episodes and that he's their uncle. I wonder what kind of role will he play in both of their lives in the development of the people that they end up ultimately being in the last. And who is this? Is this Raquel's brother or is this their father's brother? So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, who's who's how is he related to them as far as mm-hmm. being the uncle? You know, is this Raquel's brother that's helping her? in the life so yes right. I'm interested about that character too it will be an interesting twist if it come, end up being that he's Bree <sighs> oh mm. go ahead really B I like that idea I'm, mm. just, saying, I'm just saying if he that makes it all the way to the end be. of season one because he does it, make it, it through all the reason, every season I mean every episode it stands the reason that if he had if they if Ghost and Tasha had to get rid of Kenan Kanan excuse me it stands the reason that if Breeze was still around or in the picture, if they're related by blood, I mean, it just it just stands the reason that there may be a connection. I don't know. I'm not saying there is, but I'm just saying it could be. I like the it's theory, interesting though. interesting to see whose child Jukebox end up being. Is this his daughter? You know, is, is that Jukebox... That is interesting. You know, because, because Jukebox was... Because ju- remember, Jukebox hated Ghost and them exactly. as this much, much as, if not more, yep. than Kanan. Yep, but but they said, but what I read, it says that, he, that he's the uncle, that he's the remember uncle the reason, of both of them. Oh, right. he, she was he's the uncle of both Tariq. of them. Okay, he's the uncle, okay. he's the uncle oh, okay. of both of them. So that's what that's what I read. You know that he was the uncle of both of them. You know, and I was just like, well, how does how what role does he play in both for him to be in all ten episodes? One thing I didn't see was there was any reference to Kanan's father. So. Um, it's, it's going to be um, interesting to see the family ties because, uh, you know, who's Jukebox's parents, you know, are they going to be part of the life, you know, is mm-hmm. the whole family, you know, is the whole family in the life is, is what's going to be very interesting to see. Right, because all I was going to say was that going back to what y'all were saying about hoping that it's not, you know, basically just a retread of what we've already seen, I was going to say that the, and I remember us a couple of months ago when that trailer first dropped, we were all excited, and the trailer just didn't even feel the same. It didn't feel like Mm-mm. a power. It it just didn't feel like a power trailer. So, yep. Yeah, you know what I mean. So even that gives me hope because it just doesn't feel the same. It don't feel the same. Uh, I definitely don't think that it's going to be in comparison to what I in comparison to what I saw and what I felt when they introduced Power Two when they was to do book two or whatever, from the end of the original power, when we saw the kids playing and we're talking about, hey, Tommy and all that type of stuff. It didn't, like, it, like, I guess I set my expectations on that. And then when I got to it, it was, like, completely opposite of what, uh, of what I I thought it was going to be. This right here, I think is going to stick to the theme of the actual title. Um, and and like I said, I'm ready for these characters to uh, I'm ready for these characters to take off and for it to be developed. At better acting, oh God, please better acting. So that was poorly done. I totally agree with you on that. I totally agree with you on that because that was one of my disinterests about wanting to even watch this version of Power. Is kind of very similar to what my expectations were for book two because I knew that was going to be just 
a bunch of garbage. Mm. But when they showed us that young version of Ghost, Tommy, and Angela at the end of Power, that's what my expectations were going to be for book three. And mm. they're not. So and that's what look, it should have been. That's what it should have been, but at the same time, listen to what we're saying. We're saying that we don't want to see that. So I'm kind of glad that we are not getting that. Because I think that should have been, to me, I think that should have been the start of book two. I think that should have been the, the start of book two. And they could have really went a different direction with book two, where Tariq, Tariq should have had the opportunity to learn about his father's past and live in that moment of regretting what he ended up doing to his father. That's what I wanted to see happen in book two. Not a retelling of a new version of Ghost and it becoming his son. I really right. want, especially when I saw the episode where Tariq and Ghost's uncle met at the funeral. I really mm. wanted Tariq to spend some time with that uncle learning about his father's past. There, I wanted to see those flashbacks to young Ghost, young Tasha, young whatchamacallit, told from the uncle's perspective. Angela. Of, Angela of how Ghost became who he became. And then mm -hmm. Tariq have that moment of regret that, damn, I killed my father, not knowing he did these things to have a better life. You know, he did these things because, you know, his father died. His mom was a drunk. You know, he was out here on the street, so he had to do what he had to do to survive. I wanted Tariq to learn more about his father's past. And because all the characters that were able to tell Tariq anything else about Ghost's past are gone, including his mom, I really didn't even like how they ended things with Tasha because, to me, it feels like we're not going to see Tasha anymore in book two. The whole send her off to witness protection, that, that was a write-off for her. She's gone. Yeah, especially yeah since, I can see especially that. Especially since um, Natari is going to be starring on in a new show on ABC with Brandy and Eve. She really ain't coming back. Like, she maybe in a flashback. Back. I mean, maybe in a flashback here or there, but the fact that she got a whole new TV show coming on in the fall, I'm not saying she can't film both, but I don't see her being a pivotal character if she does. Right. Exactly. They'll probably, you know, like... Uh, what you call it, like a write-in, or yeah, you know, uh, they'll they'll back reference her, there. they'll reference okay. her, yeah, or there'll be episodes where Tariq is on the phone with her, but they just, yeah, they won't show her, yeah, right, right, you know, yeah. So I I'm reading on one of the characters right now. I believe his name is Symphony Basket. I might be saying it wrong. I we will find out when uh, it comes on. Who's what happened to be like the love interest of uh, of Kane's mom, and from from just uh the, the brief details of what they said is that there are like night like two completely different people which I find extremely interested like he's going to school to get his masters he he got a legit straight up and down job you know whatever and for her to find interest in him or whatever I find that I find that interesting it could be I useful for yeah I find I find it interesting it kind of I'm gonna keep my thoughts on that. I'm gonna let that character develop a little bit more. I like that. I like hearing that, but again, we've seen that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was just about to get ready to say that. I swear I was just about to get ready to say that. I was like, I'm just gonna let the character develop a little bit more, but I've seen this before. Yep. We've seen it with Ghost and Angie. Exactly. We've I've seen, seen it with Monet before. and the uh, police detective. Mm -hmm. We've seen that. Now, maybe this will be done a little bit better. Maybe this will be done a little bit better. Maybe maybe something happens to him. How many episodes is he in? Um, that I'm not sure of. It doesn't say I have to go back. I kind of just like start mm -hmm. clicking on characters. The, uh, some of the main cast that was in there. Okay, um, so this is what I can foreshadow with this. He's a good guy. He's going to school. He's trying to better himself. He's her love interest, whatever. Something happens to him relating to street life, drugs, something, and he ends up getting killed or whatever. Maybe that's the catalyst that starts her into becoming who she become, becomes. So let's 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 just see. Let's let's give a little hope for it. Let's not look for the worst already. Yeah, I'm let's not gonna jump into that, I wanna jump into conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like I kinda hope, I kinda let's see this before. That this one is done better. That, but but that it also says character art. It also says that somewhere their relationship becomes challenging. You know where there's a challenge to 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 both of their separate lives. You know, so I'm I don't see it, it can't it can't tie in or be 
too similar to their two situations because they both was authoritative figures with him being yep. a cop, you know, and her, yep. you know, being a little, so by him just being a bartender and having a major, you know, going to school to try to get his major or something, I, it didn't say what it was a major for, you know, so those, those are big differences, you know, in, in comparison because they were doing dirty work and they was able to, they was put in the position of power where they could help them out with their dirty work. That's true. That's so true. The police I, I would I, I want to see it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's just interesting that I read that. I was just kind of like, like, like I've read this book before, haven't I? Yep. <laughs> Let's just hope that Raquel, uh, Kane's mom, is not a Monet. I would rather her be more of a Tasha than a Monet. And let's hope that the lady that's portraying her is a better actor, actress than Mary J. Blige. I love Mary J. Blige. Love her. But she should not have been casted for that role. So let's just hope that the acting comes up all the way. And we have we have vets in here. So I mean, with people like Omar Epps, I have hope. Even with Lorenz Tate being brought in. And I really hope that influence... And I, uh, I really hope that Influence is... It, it's going to be interesting to see the story arc for Influence because we all know that Lorenz Tate can carry a show. Um, however, his character and power didn't interest me. Didn't interest me. I was not interested in the whole Sean Tate story arc, this whole aspiration to become governor. That just... It lost me because there was too it, many it was other stupid. interesting things. It, yeah, there was too many other interesting things going on in power. You had the whole dynamics with who shot ghosts. You had the whole dynamics with Tasha and Tariq and her druggy daycare. There was just too many other things <laughs> that, that interest me. Her druggy daycare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely hoping for better acting. You know, like you said that, you know, with the Riz, like Omar Epps, you know, he's a he's definitely somebody that's well vet. seasoned. But hell, so was Method Man. You know, Method Man a bit. Wait a, a minute, but Method, Man, but Method did, Man was a Method way Man better played, character. Yeah, he was Method a Man way better character part. than Terry Silver. He was Method way better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, that was a bad, was a, was a bad actor. I'm not saying that, you know, but I'm just saying like with a seasoned character. I never see Mary J. Blige have to play a major role. She might pop That's up. True. Yeah, she might pop That's up. That's true. You know, and I had to research some of these uh, actual actors and actresses and see if they played in anything else. You know, on a uh, on a major platform, everybody needs they break. I just think that should have been Mary J. Blige's break. She didn't really. Well, need one thing that I do like break. about Book Three is we don't have an all star cast now. In Power, you can say that we pretty much we had a. We had a more experienced cast with power. So I think that's what that, definitely. that saved that show because yeah, you definitely. know uh the, the chick that played Angela, she had played in movies and she had played roles where she was what was the movie that she played in? I just watched it not too long ago. Uh she's played in movies before where she's played a drug dealer's girlfriend and stuff. So she was she was well equipped. To play this role that she played as an attorney, yeah. in a drug a drug crime series. Yeah, uh, Amari Hardrick, he had already been in uh, several different movies mm-hmm. when he played a, a similar character to Ghost. You right. know, uh, Joseph Sikora, he was seasoned. So you know, you had you had you had a lot of experience. I mean, even Fifty Cent, even Fifty Cent. Yes, you had a lot of experience acting. And oh, uh, Joey Badass is in this one. Uh, with Joe Proctor, uh, what's his name? Um, mm. the guy who played uh, uh, Joe Proctor. I mean, you had a lot of vets in in power. He was in book, uh, Think Like a Man and some other stuff. Think too. Like a Man, yeah. Um, but in book two, you had you didn't have an all star cast. Well, you had an all star cast by name, but they weren't they weren't experienced. And that's that's another thing that concerns me about book three is. You don't have an all star cast. So you're going to have a lot of young, new, fresh, out the gate actors, actresses, and actors. And I don't have nothing to say about that. But when you have a name like Power in your show, the bar has been set already. Before we even watch the first episode, the bar has been set on what we want to see. Right. We want to see something good. Right. Right. We want to see something good. So I just hope that we have better cast of actors and actresses. Can I bring another? Into the mix, what I just read about Joy Badass playing Unique. Unique so it. happens to be is Unique so happens to be the rival 
to uh, Raquel and the uncle. You know, he's the rival kingpin. It says that his brother was arrested, you know, or whatever. It doesn't, you know, specify for whatever reason. We'll probably get into that. But, you know, uh, it says that he pretty much took over, you know, Southside Jamaica Queen's uh, shop when, when that happened. And that's the biggest rival. So we will see a, a lot of Joey Badass in it as, you know, times develop because he's a rival to the mom and the uncle, which probably in turn be a rival to Kanan, which is also very interesting to see. I, I, I'm here for it. I, I'm definitely so here for it. So for that, it. we know right there there's, a, there, there's enough with that story arc right there to carry over into other seasons. Mm-hmm. So the rival. Because, I mean, it's just like what we saw with Powell, with Lobos. I mean, and even, well, no, I think they got rid of Milan in one season, but I think Lobos carried on into a couple of seasons. I think it was like two seasons before they got rid of Lobos. Yeah. So that's going to be really good. So that's going to be a really good story arc, then. That's good. Yeah. And I'm, I'm digging this, what you're doing, Jack, with these characters. Because that's what I was curious about. What, what kind of characters are we going to be introduced to? You know? Yeah, it's definitely, I think it's definitely going to be interesting. I, I like wanted to get more to the character development if this can be a continuous stay. I didn't get into the character development in Power 2, which I should have, because Lord knows it is some weird shit going on in that Y'all left me place. hanging. Y'all left me hanging with Power 2. I was by, out there by myself. <laughs> I was like, y'all was like, screw this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I watched it. I, I, would, I would continuously watch it. I, I, I struggled through some a, of it. It took me... So I didn't have that, that love for book two as I did with Power. All six seasons of Power. Do you guys remember what this... I mean, this is how we all met. This is how we all came to do this because we enjoyed the show so much. We would stay up till midnight when that shit hit on demand. We would be mm-hmm. up... Uh, really, be I remember watching your reviews at two, three o'clock in the morning after watching. <laughs> right, because I yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I didn't have that sense of excitement about watching that show. Now we did have it back for P Valley when we watched P Valley. We would stay <clears> up <throat> to midnight waiting on P Valley. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, but we just we didn't get that we didn't get that type of show with book two. And they are so. currently filming. Just so you know, they are at Tyler Perry Studios filming. Uh, oh God! Two. No, his studios, not him. Oh, studio. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. Listen, Black Panther was filmed at Tyler Perry Studios. And that don't have nothing to do with Tyler Perry. Okay, it's all right. Studio. Okay, it's just his studio. Yeah, cool yeah because for those of you who may or may not know, P Valley is filmed in Atlanta. So yes, uh, it is a show that is portrayed in Mississippi, but it's actually filmed here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> no, Tyler Perry don't have nothing to do with it other than renting out his studio. That's it. That's all. That's cool. <laughs> That's like, cool. That's, you know, you I would say that for Tyler Perry, I would say that for a whole other podcast. Yeah, Tyler I Perry know, has we probably like, need to the, do a podcast about that. As a matter of fact. Yeah, oh my remember, God! Yeah, don't get me started. Tyler Perry has the largest. He he has the largest studio on the East Coast, and probably one of the largest studios at all. Period. He's got the largest studio on the East Coast, I believe. Most, most of the that. shows that are most of the black shows that are filmed in Atlanta are filmed at uh, Tyler Perry Studios. Right, yeah, um, right. And there are some that there are some other shows that are actually filmed um, throughout Georgia here as well. Um, some areas that are very uh, similar to where I used to live and work in. Um, so it's very interesting to see where a lot of these shows are filmed at. Um, mm-hmm. Two things I do not want to see in book three that were in book two is I don't want to see this whole law and order shit. Now, yes, I, the, the police element where, you know, you got the police trying to chase the bad guys. I get that. But I don't want to see these trials. I don't want to see these lawyers. I don't want to see these sax. I don't want to see a character like sax. All I don't right. want to see no Terry Silvers. I don't want to see any of that. Not for the first season. I really want the first season to be about the street life and you know, how they got to the point where they at. I don't want to see that whole prosecuting element. I don't want to see a whole season of them trying to prosecute Kanan's mom and trying to put charges on her. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. I have uh, one more. I'm going to bring in one more character before we, you know, hello? Hello? Yeah, we're still here. We're here, Jack. No, we lost. We lost. We lost. Yeah, we lost Juggernaut. So, um, 
There is a uh, Davina Harrison. Davina Harrison is the love interest. Is the first love for Kanan. Oh, here's what oh. make it interesting. Davina is related to Unique, who's the rival of uh, uh of his mom. Oh, that's gonna be complicated. Who's the I rival of like his we... mom? They they love interest became solid after Kanan. And her got into a fight in school, <laughs> according to what I read now. Wow. This is going to be interesting. So this is going to have a lot of plot twists. I yeah. like shows with a lot of plot twists because it makes for me not to predict what's going to happen from episode to episode. And much like, and, and, and it took a while for Power to get here because maybe the first three to four seasons of Power weren't as predictable as the last two seasons were. Just mm-hmm. about every episode of season five and season six in power became predictable in mm-hmm. some way, shape, form, or fashion. Whether you predicted the entire <laughs> episode or elements in the episode, you, you there was something that became predictable. So with right. me, I feel like we actually have a show that's going to keep us on edge and right. not be able to predict what's happening from episode to episode. So that's good. Yeah, I'm definitely um I'm definitely digging the characters in the uh brief descriptions that they're giving. Um I can't think of the website that I'm on right now. I'm kinda like flipping through like forty different pages right now, trying to get some more information about the characters. It's here, mm-hmm. you know. But um I, I think the love interest <laughs> Kanan having the love interest by alone is funny. Right. We'll see and, like and, character. And <laughs> and I think you get to see gonna... him have a love interest in power other than well, wait a minute. Maybe she turns, she grows up to be Sean's mom. Could be. Maybe she grows up to be Sean's mom. Could be. Do we, yeah, because we met Sean's mother. Remember, we Sean? met Sean's yeah. mother. And remember, yeah. she held him down when he was locked up. Because remember, when he got out, you know, uh, she gave him the money, the bag of money. And right. she had hold, held on to all those years. She might be, you know what? That that could very well be Sean's mother. Now, I would That's like that. Interesting. I would like that. I would very, uh, and I would like to see them That's have interesting. that child. Right. Because that definitely could be a very definitive part of who we see him grow up to be. Um, to become, yeah. To become, yeah. Because we know how that can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially oh, if the mom, it. especially if, uh, again, this would have to come later on down the line, later seasons or towards the, or at the very least, the last season, whatever mm-hmm. that is, if that's season three, if that's season four, if it makes it the sixth season. In the last right. season, we should see that development. So now we see that relationship and we understood why she held him down while he was locked up and all that. So she may very well be a character that turns out to be one that we've already knew from mm-hmm. previous series. So that was a good catch, uh, um, D. That was a very good catch. Very interesting. I can't wait. I'm, I'm excited. You I definitely is. Sun, I just don't want to Sunday be. midnight. You catch me there. No, Saturday midnight. Saturday midnight. We will Saturday, be there. Saturday midnight. I'm sorry. midnight. <laughs> you catch me there. I'm sorry. Saturday midnight. You catch me and there. Then, at around about 2 30, we'll be watching uh Really's review. Yeah. And then we'll be trying to get the band. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a minute. Hold up. If I'm allowed, am I allowed to stay up and watch it next week, sir? <laughs> yeah, you're allowed to stay up and watch it next week. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll do our podcast on you know Sunday. <laughs> then we'll do our podcast because see, Crystal got to get her review out first. She got to get a review out first. So we got to be up late. We got to stay up to midnight to watch it. And then we got to watch it about two or three times before she do her review. So we're not going to get that review until about 2.30. So <laughs> that's that, that's that's fine. I mean, I'm I'm here for that. I, I'm here. Do we have an intro song for it yet? Is that the is the, the intro we song do they got? Have that's... an intro song. I haven't. And I well, you know, I've already took care of all that. <laughs> you know, I'm already. You know me. So it will be part of our intro for the podcast. The name Sweet. of the song is called "Part of the Game." It has a very uh uh love without a limit uh remakes vibe to it. Oh, I have uh, heard it. Yep, it's called Part of the Game, uh, 50 Cent, of course. Um, so I have listened to the theme song already and um, watched the video for it. So it's very 90s. Um, I think I've seen the video. I think yeah, I've seen the video I have for heard it. it. Yep, yeah, so it's out okay. there. It's out there on YouTube for those of you who all want to check it out. Um, one thing I do like about it as well is we're not going to see 50 Cent per se. 
again in later seasons we may get uh it will be nice to see in the very last season we see um the characters that we met in season one of power play their younger selves so mm-hmm. it'd be nice to see uh tasha come back and play her younger self or uh, mari hardrick come back and play his younger self 50 cent play a younger version of himself i would like to see the older versions of them play the younger versions of themselves at the last season that takes us into book That'd one. I want to see Kanan get locked up. That'd I want to see him get locked up. I want to see where Ghost and Tasha sit and scheme and plan to lock him up. I want to see all that. I want to see how up. they meet. I want to see all of that because yeah. I'm telling you, and I know it may just be me. It may be me reading too much into it, but I told y'all my theory before. And I will hold on to it until they they show me something different um, on the show, but Tasha had a level of hate for Keenan. Like, she didn't even want that dude touching her. Remember the couple of times that and she was just like recoil when he even tried to touch her? There's more there. There's, there is something to that story. I don't think it's just Ghost wanted, you know, wanted your spot. Like, so you feel like there's he, a level he, of hate. he raped her? Do you feel I, like? I already told you I thought Tariq was his son. Now, I already told y'all that. That's hmm. my, my theory is that Tariq is his, is his son. That's my theory. Now, again, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying, listen. That's just my theory. For them to hold on to that nugget, that that long, six seasons of power, a season of book two, and now a season of book three, and for us to find out I'm book three, I would be very disappointed. Yeah. I, I would be I would be very disappointed. Now it could be a grab for ratings. It could be a grab to keep show interest in. May not have been the plan. May not have originally been the plan for uh, Kanan to turn out to be Tariq's father. But I'm still mm. going to hold true to the fact that uh, Tariq and um, Reyna were twins. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting that. Every time I come up with my theory, you remind me of that. Okay, I forget it. Forget it. Because yeah. so, well, I keep along, forgetting about that. If I keep that, forgetting if about that the that does twins. end up being yeah. the case, that means that uh, Kanan seared both of them and that he right. is the father of Tariq and Raina. Yeah, I keep forgetting the, I keep forgetting that Tariq was a damn twin. But I hate the All fact right. that they explored if they were going to be twins, I would have liked to have... There should have been more character development between Tariq and Raina, where we we realized that they were twins on a regular basis. Right. Again, you because you lose that moment all the time. They didn't do such a good job telling that. Yeah, story because I always thought kids, Tariq was the oldest. Were twins. In that. Yeah, yeah. I thought him and Raina were close in age, but I always felt like Tariq was the oldest and Raina was like a gray behind. You know what I mean? Like I know they went to the same school and stuff, but I never got mm-hmm. the feeling that they were in the same classes and that they were in the same I never got that feeling and I know because that, it wasn't written that way uh yeah really. it wasn't written that way B it was not written that way it should have been written that way where we were constantly reminded that they were twins it would have helped with the whole losing Raina when Raina got killed we would have mourned Tariq should have mourned more for the loss of his twin sister mm-hmm. but they did such a poor job connecting that dot that yeah they were twins it was casually mentioned throughout the show. Even in the episode where they did the birthday. And what really pissed me off is in Power when they did Happy Birthday. And, you know, Tariq, that was where Tariq kind of went off on Drunk Ghost when he came home. And, Mm -hmm. you know, Tasha brought home the wrong birthday cake and all that. We realized in that moment that, yeah, they were twins and Tasha's used to buying two different cakes um, every year. This year she brought the wrong cake. She yeah, the, they highlighted the child that she more. loved the most, right? Or the child that she missed the most, but she really didn't get Tariq's cake. But in the episode of book two, where Tasha was having the dream at, uh, in jail of it being Raina's birthday, it should have been Raina and Tariq's birthday. Mm-hmm. But in the episode, it made it seem like it was Raina's birthday and not Tariq's birthday that Raina came home for her birthday, not their birthday. Right, you know, so they didn't do such a good job in um, the first series and book two with connecting that that puzzle piece that they are twins. I mean, so, the reality is, for the exception of Tariq, they did a piss poor job with all the kids. Like we didn't really learn a lot about Raina and the baby. I I feel like they kept forgetting they had one. <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? like and with Tasha now being in job. witness protection, I do b- believe that Yasmin is going to become a character that is written off. 
because she's I, I don't see much story arc for Tasha's mother. They if Tasha aged is not there. Her? Yeah, they did age her. Jesus, they aged her. They did age her. They did age her a little bit in book two. But what I'm saying is, if Tasha's no longer going to be part of book two, I don't see much use for them having Yasmin in book two. I don't see mm-hmm. other than a reference to my little sister and my grandmother. I don't see us seeing those characters anymore. Unless it comes to a later season and um, they bring Tasha back to reclaim her family or whatever. Or, you know, Tommy ends up getting killed and she feels safe enough to come back. That's the only time I feel like uh, we're going to ever see a uh, reference to Tasha anymore in book two. Um, so I think when we're, with us losing Tasha, we're going to lose the kids and the mama story arc all the way. But um, I do believe that there has been some type of dealings with Tasha and Kanan pre-Ghost. Or mm-hmm. even during Ghost. Yeah, I just think it's something there, you know. And yeah. even if she did, even if he didn't leave her pregnant, I do believe that he tried to push up on her, maybe aggressively. Maybe he killed someone that was close to her, you know, because a lot of what we don't know in power is Tasha's story. We don't know a lot right. about Tasha and how she her became. Her background and everything. Her background or anything. So right. We don't know if Tasha had an older brother or someone that ran with them. And that's how she got attracted to ghosts because she was used to them all being around. We don't know what Kanan may have done to her. Because right. like I said, we know that be... it was Tasha's idea to set him up. Mm-hmm. We know that right. Tasha fed this idea to go. So you're right, really, BTV. There is some type of underlying hatred that Ta- the character Tasha had for the character Kanan. We just don't know what the motivation was. So I feel right. like somewhere along the way, we're going to see Kanan take something from her, whether it's her virginity, whether it's a loved one. We're going to see something that push Tasha to scheme on him and ultimately Tasha is the ultimate villain whereas we thought all these years that Ghost was the villain it could be that Tasha was the one that was pulling the strings behind the scenes all along Mm -hmm. puppeteering all this to happen with Kanan so and that was her revenge against him because ultimately Tasha got him killed she was the one that convinced Tariq to set him up so at the end of the day, she she was the brains behind Kanan's downfall both times. Yeah. Him going to jail and him ultimately getting killed. So you may yeah, be on something. Some, like that. There's something there. I just, I mean, I, I and I understand what you're saying that that's something that they, like that would have been crazy for them to hold on to it all this time. Yeah. That would that would be so disappointing. Yeah. yeah we got oh, okay. Um, I put my phone on Do Not Disturb, but it's not working. Anyway, um, but they they planned out a book two, book three. Like, they planned all of this out. So it may have been a storyboard, like you said, maybe not initially, but then as the season, as the series went on with book, when we were uh, book one, and then building the Keenan storyline, they may have added something that they're going to bring to us later. And I'm not saying it's that deep, like, that he's the father. Like, I felt like that, but, you know, y'all keep reminding me about the twin thing. But... <laughs> There's something more to it than just oh, Ghost wanted wanted his spot. Like she has a level of hate for this man. Like there is, like you said, there is something. And, and she perpetuated all this to happen. I mean, and she did it very. She did it in a way where it wasn't obvious. You know, mm-hmm. we didn't learn it until later seasons and later on down the line that you know it was Tasha that was that motivated all this to happen. So, and I think we'll we'll learn what that motivation was, that that hatred. So, um, and there may even be a connection between Tasha and, and Jukebox. I mean, so it's going to be very interesting maybe. to see that character. Maybe they went to school together. They might have been friends at one. Maybe it's a, a like a, a situation like with her and Lala. Maybe they were friends at one time. Yep. Yep. They do bring up. Uh, they do bring up at least Jukebox father in the um, in the uh, upcoming episodes. They do. They do bring him up. All right, what you got for him? Um, basically, what they said is is that he is like he is pretty much Tommy, as far as his character. He's mm. not he's not the sharpest, but he's way more ruthless. He's the muscle. He's the muscle. Yeah, he's the muscle. Yeah, he, yeah. He's he's pretty much. 
enough talking. Let's let's get straight to it. Which this would explain how she becomes so ruthless. So mm-hmm. if her father was the muscle, then uh, naturally she's she's instinctively her father per se because I mean she was kind of ruthless and and um but she was also smart too because you know she did have a legit job and she was on the she was in law enforcement so I'm she, about to say she was a damn DC cop <laughs> yeah she she <laughs> right. used she used her job to which means she didn't know, have a record which means whatever they did get into she never got caught she never right. got caught. That's right. Right, because it just says that he is off the hook. That he apparently is going to be not a fan favorite in upcoming episodes because he's that off the hook. Oh, wow. Well, to be quite honest with you, Jukebox wasn't really a fan favorite, so it's very interesting to see that they're 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 putting so much emphasis on her character. So there's there's got to be a, a very big story to tell where that's concerned, and maybe it's because of her father. Because in power, I, I felt like Jukebox served her purpose in that season, and I could have did without not hearing her name or hearing her character mentioned again. Um, so the fact that they're bringing her back, and she's such a, a big part of uh, book three, that tells me right there that uh, we're going to get a way better storytelling than we've seen with previous seasons of power. So I'm really excited about that. Which is interesting because, you know, they, it goes into a little bit further. It says that jukebox and her dad really couldn't connect at all because of the way he went about things that he wasn't really a thinker. He acted first and did, you know, whatever the consequences was, was the consequences, which I wonder is that some type of connection would make her go to the cop route. You know, which pushes her towards being a dirty cop or or whatever, so she could be more oh. of a, a a thinker before she do these things and have be an authoritative figure on her side for you know doing whatever it is that she was doing in the street. But it says that like they really couldn't connect because of the way he went about taking care of business. Well, well Jukebox was a. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead, Chris. I was just gonna say Jukebox. Jukebox was ruthless, but she was a thinker. Like she, she was smart about how she moved, but mm-hmm. she was ruthless in how she. You know what I'm saying? Like she, she was ruthless in how she moved, but she, she was smart. She wasn't a Tommy like a hothead. Like right. she definitely thought stuff out, and she was very much a uh, well. If I do this and this and that, you know what I'm saying? Like she, because remember she was the one that came up with the whole plan, the little fake kidnapping like situation. Like she, she wasn't dumb. But no, not at all. She was ruthless. No, she wasn't. But I'm still conflicted with that because she was also greedy. She was cons- because ultimately that's what got her killed. Because she she kept pushing for a money grab from Ghost. She kept pushing that narrative for a money grab with Ghost. For Kanan, I don't think it was more so about the money. He wanted to hurt Ghost. He didn't care yeah. about the money. Mm-hmm. Right, right, you know, yeah. Where true. for her it was a cash grab. She wanted money, 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 money. She just kept trying to extort the money part of it, and that's what ultimately ended up getting her killed because she was holding Tariq Ransom, you know, and then that's when Ghost and Kanan had to go break into Tommy Stash house to steal all the money to pay mm-hmm. the ransom to Jukebox, and she ultimately ended up getting killed and not even get to enjoy the money. So, but, I feel As you like, said before, does that all connect with, you know, why she hates, like, does all this connect and why she hated Ghost so much? Right. Because she she hated Ghost for a whole different reason per se. She was after the money. Mm-hmm. Kenny wanted to break him like right. in the heart. You know, Kenny wanted to get him where it hurt him the most. Whereas she felt like hurting his pockets was the ultimate revenge. Right. So they were conflicted in how they wanted to extract their revenge against mm-hmm. Ghost. So it seems like both That's of true. them had different agendas as to why they wanted to hurt him the most. Ju- on jukebox end it was the money on Kanan end it's like no he took away everything that I worked for I want to take that back and take something that hurts him so I want his son you know jukebox is like fuck that little nigga I want the money and I so, do whatever like, it takes were, for me to get were, this money yes they were conflicted where that was concerned so it's going to be very interesting to see what Ghost has done to her to hurt her Maybe it's maybe it turns out to be that ghost, uh, that that jukebox was interested in ghosts and he really Russia. Maybe, maybe it's something as simple it, as yeah, that. You know what? We know a woman's listen, a woman scorn, a woman scorn, exactly. 
So it's going to be very interesting to see when that season comes because we're not going to find any of that out in season four. Right. <laughs> right. But it's going to be very interesting to see when that season comes, uh, how Ghost affects. Apparently, Ghost's character is, is, is left residual effects on everyone from Tasha down to Angela down to Kanan. So it, it 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 will make me receive him being killed the way he was killed in um, the end of power much better to see all these wrongs that he's done to other people. But ultimately, I still go back to Tasha and I feel like all of it is at Tasha's. I'm not going to say that Ghost wasn't smart. We all know that Ghost was smart, but we also know that Ghost can be pussy whipped very easily and manipulated through sex. And so I really feel like Tasha manipulated Ghost's decisions a lot. And even I want to go as far as to say in with her character, I feel like maybe she purposely got pregnant mm. to trap him. Mm. I'm really gonna I'm really gonna see I really think that we're gonna see Tasha be more calculating and more we we look at Tasha as a half smart chicken head as Ghost called her at the end of power. But really to be quite honest with you, we know that Tasha was way smarter than that. We know that Tasha had that accounting degree and everything. So we knew that Tasha was, she she she, she made moves too. And she kind of always didn't get her credit because of Ghost. So I really mm-hmm. think that when we get to that story arc, that we're going to see Tasha be more manipulative than what we have seen in the adult version of her character. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely um, one thing we know about Tasha, because we met her mama, is that she was definitely raised to be a hustler's hoe. So, like, oh, yeah, I clearly, forgot about that element. Yeah, clearly she was in and around the game because her mother was just like, her mother knew who Ghost was and didn't care. Her only thing was, you need to be making sure you're taking care of business. Like, are you and getting the money. I like, yeah, are you making sure that you good? financially if something happened to him like are you stashing some money are you uh, you know what are you doing to take care of you and your family in case something happened to him and so like we know that there was no issue as far as her mom like oh my goodness how dare you what does he do for a living like she was with it like she was with it okay. so what I think we're going to see with this being <laughs> South, uh, South Jamaican right. Queens in the 90s everybody out here in the life everybody running some kind of lick uh, just to survive you know, just to survive. So I think that all these young versions of these characters, none of them are clean. I think the cleanest person that we're going to see the young version of is going to be the character uh, DJ was talking about, the bartender that was going to school, uh, maybe young Angela. And even with young Angela, I don't think that she was clean. I think that she knew that uh, Ghost was running the streets or whatever. She was just attracted to that. But ultimately, because of the decisions her parents made for her led her on a parallel, uh, uh, led her on a path of the straight and narrow. But ultimately, if she would have stayed behind and not had went to school, she would have probably been part of the life too. So I think that's how Keisha and well, even Lakeisha. I'm not going to even say Lakeisha was part of the life. She was part of the life in a different way. She might have been running men's pockets and, and running through men like that. But as far as Tasha and Ghost, Tommy and um jukebox and canon we're going to all see them out there pulling legs and stunts and things like that because they they were all young and didn't have parental guidance or either the parental guidance that they did have was all wrong it's just like with right. kane's mom we see kane's mom she's not going to be the 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 right mother <laughs> to say no son you don't need to be out here you know selling dope and and killing people you know, even with Tommy's mom, we know that Tommy mom was a stripper and that she was a, a cokehead and things like that. So we, we're, we're going to see <laughs> that these, these characters became what they are because of their influence by their parental guidance. You know, if their right. parents are in the life, you know, and doing all these crazy things, what do you expect for them to turn out? So right? then the so. trailer, right, in the trailer, we see um, Kane's mom basically telling him, listen, if this is, you know, I, if this is what, what you want to do, then okay, but, you know, like, once you in, you in. It ain't no turning back. Like, we don't, yep. I don't see her saying, oh, no, son. You know what I mean? But she like, all right, like, I, this ain't what I really wanted for you, but once you in, you in. Like, you better make sure, like, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. yeah. 
Right. So I don't know. Well, I'm looking forward to our first uh, podcast, episode one. Does anyone know what the title is for episode one yet? No, I have no me, idea. Hold on, I can look it yet. up. Okay, cool. I can look it up real quick. I'm. Let me see. I was in. Um, but yeah, I was, I'm definitely. I'm definitely think that we're going to get a whole new version of power. I think that this is going to uh, bring the fans back. I think that the true hardcore power fans from season one, episode one. Um, is is going to be brought back to that feeling again. I think that we're going to have a really good show that we're going to enjoy for the summer, mm-hmm. and hopefully we'll get P Valley right after that. <laughs> I'm open. I don't have a star date on P Valley yet, but I'm definitely because it's been a year, yo. It's been a year, so we need well, to you know, out. everything got pushed back you with know? COVID, yeah. But even mm-hmm. with um production, because I mean, even some of these other series are in pre um production right now. I think uh, influence. I think influence and force are in pre-production as well, so it'd be what great. Influence, to see. what's that? Influence is going to be uh, book five. Oh, okay. It's, okay. Um, okay. Rashad, it's Rashad Tate's uh, story, which Boo. that's the least oh, okay. one I'm looking forward to. Boo. <laughs> I'm really, really looking forward to force, and I'm hoping that they get it together. And you're right, uh, really, be I forgot all about the COVID crap, but um, I really think yeah, that, they got the whole um. Am I looking at the right thing? Yeah, they got the whole episode list, it looks like. Okay, okay. Episode well, one is called Know What This Is About. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay, wait, um, drop that oh, episode. no, you know what? That's not, you know what? I take that back. No, it's not, because they got that as, they have that listed as a name for all of the episodes, so no, that's not, that can't be right. It can't be the same title for every episode. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. But what would be nice to see, ultimately, once everything gets, um, um, you know, once everything gets moved back out because of COVID and everything, it would be nice to see that these seasons air consecutively. You know, like what we should have saw at the end of book two, start book three. At the end of season one, book three, start book four. Mm-hmm. At the e- um, end of season one, book four, start book five. That's how I would like to see them. But this what? year, these year gaps in between, it almost makes you want to go back and watch all power again just to lead up to this. You well know? the thing is it looks like that's what's going to happen now like I know I know we really don't care a whole lot about book two but book two they're filming right now season two for book two so it looks like we're going to go from book three and by the time we're done it's ten episodes so you figure that's at least ten weeks of book three then maybe like a two week window and then I feel like we're going to get book four in early fall I mean book two season two in like early fall and then after we get those episodes out the way then roll over to book four see i wish they would have aired consecutively number wise i don't want to if we get book two again it needs to be uh after we it needs to be we need to see book four first we need to see book four first and then restart with two and then after we finish two go back to three four then five you know, I would like to see that where they air consecutively back to back and keep people in who's in the power universe connected to the shows. I and honestly other, didn't think we were going to get a season two of book two. I was actually surprised. Oh God. Because it just didn't seem like I mean it, it the way like they ended it, they went it, it was, they ended yeah, it. I could have I could have survived with that being the one and only season. Yeah, yep. that's what I'm saying. Like the way they ended it, like they have a they had a few cliffhangers, but nothing I cared that much about. And honestly, I don't even remember they, what the cliffhanger was, to be quite honest. I mean, the only only cliffhanger was really the the ending with with uh, Tariq basically taking um, Kane's spot in the family, and the the whole the conflict. Because they said that the conflict for season two is going to be between Mary J. Blige and her husband, like basically fighting over a how power to run struggle, a power struggle, right? So, I mean, who cares? Right? You know what who I mean? cares? Like, I don't I don't care about who cares. Of that. Who cares? Oh. Because well, I really didn't like how they left things with Tariq and Tommy. I really didn't like that element or whatever. And I'm hoping that that spills over into Force, which I know that it's not. But I really would have rather uh, season two of uh, book two to been Tommy trying to get Tasha. And that would have just been a crossover into his show or whatever the case may be. But I, I just... The, the, the way they ended season... Um, one of book two, it, it was just uh, who cares. I pass you know? on all of book two. I watch it, 
But if I'll it watch doesn't come back, because I'm supporting I'm the not, power universe. Yeah, but I'm it, not mad. I'm at not it enjoying. I'm not yeah. enjoying book two at all. I'm not mad at it if it doesn't uh, come back. In it, here. It's it's a boring show. It's a really. I mean, the best show. thing about book book two was seeing Method Man every week. That was it. Oh God. Be, oh God. <laughs> to be Listen, honest, with you, the best part about book fine. two was when they brought Tommy back. And uh, maybe when they brought back, uh, what's his name, uh, Francis, Two Bits. When they brought Two Bit back, when they brought those characters back from the first series, and all of them were coming after Tariq for money, just like Two Bit was coming after Tariq for money, Tommy was coming after Tariq and Tasha because of what they did to Ghost. That, to me, I wanted to see Tariq and him deal with the uh, the consequences of his decision. That's what I wanted to see. I wa- I didn't want to see Tariq winning. I wanted Tariq to pay back all the debts that he owed. You know, now the debt was too big. He didn't owe that. You know, that that wasn't on him, but it was nevertheless conflict on Tariq, and I like that. Uh, I wanted to see what's going to happen with the brother, uh, not the brother, but the uh, roommate uh, and the girlfriend and all that. It, it just, it's boring. And I, I need for them to, to, to turn up the action a little bit on it. And if the action is going to be season two, Monet and her husband uh, having a power struggle, I want it to be where the husband gets released then. You know, and I'm sure they'll find some kind of way to release them out of jail. But I would rather see that. But for him trying to uh, uh, fight for control behind bars at, at jail, that's boring to me. You know, Kane and the Drew and... Um, Diana, their stories all were boring. You know, I don't want to see that little girl wrapped up in a love triangle with Tariq. That we've we've seen that already with uh, Tasha and um, Angie. That's boring. So, look, book two is the last one that I can see. Uh, I'd rather see. I'd rather watch Rashad Tate's one before I watch book two. And it's I, gonna be a no look Chris Paul pass for me. I'm, if it doesn't come back to us, <laughs> I'm fine. It's gonna be I'm a no look it. Chris Paul. I won't look no for it. I won't miss Live it. Live City. <laughs> right. I'm I won't straight. miss it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm straight. It's, it's, I, I just can't. The the, the bad actor. The, I can't even remember the guy's name. But the college student. Oh my god. It's just, I think I'm gonna tell him what I know. And, you know. I'm. That ended up being it a meme. Was bad actor. And what about it's the dude terrible. that they were beating? I'm, I'm fine. Look, Guap. Look, Guap. One episode, he's fucked up in the face, and the next, the next scene, he's fine. There's no bruising. I mean, uh, I'm straight. I mean, I'm well, right. like retro, no. Like I was gonna have my reviews talking about how the storylines just did not match up. Like, like I'm all here for some creative license, but when, when, when shit just don't make sense, it's hard to really get into the story when you, when you can see all the flaws in logic. It's not even so much. When you say, "Oh wait a minute, how'd they get across town in fifteen minutes?" Okay, you can live with that. But right. when you when you can't break down the logic in the storyline, it's so hard to wrap your brain around and embrace it. When it, it just makes no logical sense. And book two was just so the storylines were just like what they wanted me to believe was so illogical. Mm-hmm. I just and I the fact like, that can't. we've been here before. You cannot carry a name with power and think that the fans are not going to come there with a high bar of expectation of what they want to see the show. And with characters from the previous series, it makes the bar even higher. So for us to get what we got, and all the callbacks to season of uh, to book one with Paz, with Tommy, with Two Bits, with all the callbacks they had to the, and we still end up with a lackluster season. Mm-hmm. It was it was not what we expected to carry the name power anything book whatever it was power the blooper reels is what it should have been power this <laughs> recording written reels. wrong <laughs> power don't let Courtney Kemp write nothing else for these episodes <laughs> it was power let's find some bullshit to put out here just to keep them reeled in a little bit exactly. And let's bridge the gap between this power and that power. Let's... Yes, you are so my intelligence at this point. Like, you really yeah. think I'm just stupid and I'm just watching the show because it's named Power, that there's no substance in this show whatsoever that that drew the fans in the way they did to carry this show for six seasons and y'all give us this bullshit and think that we're supposed to be happy about it? Nah, we're not. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode. We are looking forward to uh, next Saturday night. We're going to have our power review. Um, 
we lost Juggernaut of Souls. Maybe we can convince him to do a live. Maybe we'll do our reaction to the episode or something. I know really BTV is going to be doing her review right after the episode. So uh, we're going to probably look to try to do some new content uh, relating to our uh, podcast that kind of coincide with our podcast because we all have our own different platforms um, that we all support and participate in. So it would really be nice to maybe do a live over with uh, really BTV um one week on our reaction to an episode uh juggernaut of souls we might do it over there with him yeah. and then of course wrap up with the podcast on our thoughts so uh, i'm definitely we, down for that that's great we definitely appreciate all of you out there the fans that come in for the podcast the fans that come in from really be tv the fans that come in from juggernaut of souls like we just really appreciate you all coming in and supporting um our podcast and uh, we're going to I know we say this every time we do an episode, but we really are. Uh, We're really going to focus on more on doing some different content um, on the podcast. So it's not just going to be centered around the shows that we're watching and liking, but some of the things that are going on in the world. Uh, Me and Really BTV, we're real big on uh, true crime. So we'll do some stuff um, around that. Um, So we'll wrap up and uh, let everybody know where to find us at on social media. You can find me at uh, Retro CG. I'm on Instagram. Um, my boy Juggernaut of Souls on Instagram and YouTube, Facebook, Dennis Souls, Facebook, The Soul Firm, uh, Really Be TV. Tell everyone how to find you. Um, you can find me on YouTube at Really Be TV, or you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Really Be underscore, I mean, Really Be TV underscore on YouTube. And Jack of Jordan's our content manager. He's not on social media right now, but he's but coming all real three soon. Of our brands. <laughs> We got to get him back on social media. Come on, content man. You know what? I, I, you? I, I will be back, but I will be back in, in a different aspect. I won't be going I, not so much on my shoe collection because me and the wife, we have something that's going to, uh, that, that, you know, displays our shoe collection. But I will come back is something more so to, uh, to, to further into people's ears at work at home before they go to sleep i will be putting something together talking to retro cg and see how we can put something together and i would and i will be back in that perspective but not on my own personal collection or anything like that i'll be doing that those collabs with the wife we're gonna get you back in some aspect we can't have our content manager out here and, and the fans can't reach them <laughs> but, <laughs> but you can also follow us on TSF Entertainment. We might give you that platform right there, uh, DJ. That might be your new home. <laughs> you can also That's find bad. us on uh, TSF Entertainment on Instagram. You can also send us an email at info at tsfentertainment.com. You can also send us voice messages. We really want you guys to send us voice messages through the Anchor app. Um, you can listen to us on Apple uh, Podcasts, uh, Spotify, and all the uh, podcast platforms out there. We really want to hear your feedback. Uh, if anyone is interested in wanting to record with us, please reach out. Let us know. We love having guests on the show. and We love listening to other people's thoughts and opinions and ideas about what we are talking about. So reach out. Let us know. It's all love over here. Oh, big so, shout out to Fresh Your Highness. Uh, if you're looking for a mix, he got some mixes for you on SoundCloud. I love his mixes. It got you for anything throughout the day. Major part of TSF. Love that guy to death. Big shout out to... Did we lose you? Hello? No. Hello? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> did I, oh, did I skipped out of there when I said big shout out? <laughs> no, you were saying big shout out to... um. Fresh Your Highness, right? Yeah, I said big shout out to Fresh Your Highness. Maybe it was yeah, Retro CG who, stuff, who who skipped out, but I said big shout out to oh, okay. Fresh Your Highness who, you know, bring your musical content. He 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 make dope mixes. Major part of uh, to come down to the mixes and uh, uh, major part of TSF Entertainment and TSF Soul Firm as well. Big facts. Big facts. I totally agree. And we got to get him back on the show, too, because he's one of the show uh, regulars as well. But, you know, he has a busy schedule, so sometimes we can't always get him in on um, our scheduled podcast days. But we definitely need to get him out here because he's he's a great guy. So 
Till next week, y'all. Till next week. All right. All right. Peace, I, everybody. I, I, so if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app and go to Anchor FM to get started. You are now listening to TSF Entertainment Podcast.